Yes, hello. I missed you too. Yes. Welcome back to part two. And I'm still winging it. Mm. Today we focus on the fork springs. We will be swapping out the springs, doing an oil change, new seals and fork dust boots, and maybe the head bearings, depending on how we go. Obviously we will need various tools. The springs themselves, remember, this side goes up. You may have to just give them a clean. You get the manual, which is greatly detailed, just like the old motorcycle manuals in the 80s and 90s. Remember those where they taught you how to counter steer, how to service your own motorcycle, and today they caution you not to do anything, not to fill the wrong fuel into your motorcycle. Yeah, miss those days. Hmm? Oil, two liters. Bearing in mind the Tiger, de facto, from the factory, uses 15 weight. Now we're going for 10. I have no idea who makes this stuff. It's from Denmark. Who knows? Could be canola oil. Maybe it is. Who knows? We obviously need a torque wrench. Uh, thread locker. Grease. Grease. Some music while we're entertained. And a couple of balloons. Why balloons? Well, let me show you. Okay, this is a little bit difficult to show because the handlebars are in the way. But basically, if you don't want to damage something, you can either tape it up or you blow up a balloon, hold it over it, try not to pop it, and then let the air out and it'll shrink around it. There you go. And it's a great way to reuse all those party balloons from the bachelor parties. But we still need more. We need containers to hold the old oil to dispose of it into the dustbin. We need to measure it. We need wooden sticks to see if the level is right. Um, rags. We need a lot of sundries here. So forgive me if I don't uh, mention everything. Oh, a bungee cords we need to keep the brakes from uh, bungee diving. Is... Okay, let's go. First order of business, I've taken the windscreen off because I'm also supporting the motorcycle from the top. And because we're lucky, the Tiger has got a center stand, so it's there, and we're just lifting up the heavy-duty dash plate, which lifts the wheel slightly off the ground. Easy, right? If you want to tie... This is the anchor point where I've put her, so it's not behind. It's actually in front of the triple clamp. And, uh, yeah, I suggest let's go for it, huh? So we're going to do the first thing, we have to take the brakes off because unfortunately the brakes are holding this cowl or what do you call this, the mud guard. So got to take these off, suspend them and then we take the mud guard off. But because I am not aware of the torque specs for the various bolts because the Tiger is still too new, and that's why we're going to mark them now. You can use anything, your wife's uh, fingernail polish, lipstick, you know, if you want to make it permanent. Um, I use Tipex. Now, Tipex, I don't know if the whole world has, it's correction fluid, okay? The stuff back in the day when we used pens, you know, and we made a mistake, we put this white goo over it and then we could write over it and you could still see the mistake and it was a complete fucking disaster. Yeah, and the good thing is, once it's dry, you can just scratch it off. One last thing, the handlebars. You could cable tie them to these support structures, but you, if you damage your screen, that's on you. I'm just going to suspend it as well on the anchor points out of the way. And this is only necessary if you want to do the head bearings, okay? If you're only doing the forks, don't worry about it. Oh. At least I realized why the Tiger is so expensive. It's because there was half a pound of copper anti-seize on the bolts of the brakes. And no anti-seize on these. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. Okay, so I had to heat up the whole thing because they just won't budge and I was not going to break uh, the bolt in here because that would just make a two second job a 20 hour ordeal. Not good. If you are like me and have Alzheimer's, you can put the bolts back in here 
This one is for the speed sensor. Uh, but all these bolts holding the mudguard, they're all the same size, so there's nothing to remember here. Uh, this thing that holds the brakes, and the brakes are also being held up here on the triple clamp. Put the bolt back, just be advised this carrier may fall off. And that's as far as it goes. Now we have to loosen. Uh, all the bolts holding the forks and we take it from there uh, While you're in here, I know famous last words check the wheel bearings on your bike as well And uh, All you do you take the spacer out put your meaty Prince Charles uh, sorry King Charles fingers in there Rotate and if it's smooth no resistance or doesn't go click. They're fine. I Know I shouldn't be picking on the king to be but you know I'm not a fan <sighs> you probably heard that with those ears never mind let's continue right it's a bit of a backyard construction but we'll get there hmm forgot about these that'll be a pain in the arse right so before we even address that uh, these bolts yeah your risers one side was already rusted and water tends to pool in here so we're going to have to clean up those bolts. But again, don't use a pressure washer when washing your bike, okay? While we're doing that, we're going to mark this in the 12 o'clock position. So hopefully the torque settings will suffice. Now, now let's not forget you can tape this up so you don't scratch anything. Uh, there are a couple of lines of thought here. Either you loosen them now that caps before you take the forks off or you take them off you hold them very firmly and you open them or if you've got the vice and all that you can do that here for lazy people i say loosen them now it's easier okay if you're having trouble getting there allen key and a wrench ah, jesus ah, okay ah. These things are tough. Probably all the dust and sand in there. Whew. Whew. All right, plenty of dust, shit, and crap. No leaks, nothing major, until I saw this. This, if you're looking from the front of the motorcycle, is the right-hand fork. And this is where the brake line goes over. And after 14,000, it has worn into it quite a bit. So I'm going to, when I reassemble, find where this line is, and I'm going to put some spiral piping or tape around it as sacrifice so it doesn't wear any further. This is a design flaw, unfortunately. Okay, so what do we do? I like to clean things up before I even address anything. So just going to use a bit of, what is this? dishwashing sponge and a bit of paraffin and I'm just going to sand everything down yeah um, this is a 24 inch by the way this is as soft as it gets don't even you know insult it of being the wrong color or anything it'll just strip at I think 20,000 they service the forks or is it 30 I don't know but if you're going off-road a lot well they say for off-road bikes, you're supposed to every year or 10,000 renew the grease underneath the fork seal boot and every 20,000 or two years, depending on heavy use, you have to drop this oil. So that's what we're doing. Okay, next to get all this contraption, well, the innards out, we're going to have to open a bolt at the bottom there, please. Use brake cleaner to get all the dirt out before you loosen it. And we take it from there. Let's see what the internals look like. Yeah, that's the real chocolate. That's what I was expecting. Yeah. Here we go. Now let's see if there's anything left. Anything left? Oh yeah. Remember, fork oil is not supposed to keep impurities in suspension. Quite the opposite. It's only there to reduce friction and all the gunk will settle to the bottom of your forks. So, we gotta clean that shit out. 
there. Okay. All right. Any problems? Well, you unloosen that. You get your um, elven shoehorn. Ah. Or whatever. Put that underneath. That'll keep it. And then you loosen that bolt. Bearing in mind, as soon as you loosen, this shit will shoot that way. Not that I'm aware that this will ever happen, but, you know. To suppress this, well, okay, you gotta clean everything, press this down, get that in. Side-by-side -side comparison. Hyper Pro, Triumph. Okay, Triumph, it's sort of linear, but, oh, okay. Well, at least there's no, you know, those metal half-spacers in this thing. You can also see Wimpy, hefty. There we go. That's disassembled and cleaned. Internals are real simple. This slides off. This little cap is also able to be removed. It's loose, so don't lose it. A lot of crud around here, and basically every metal surface was coated with this uh, almost yeah black stuff. So. Easiest way, you can run a broom handle through here with a rag. The same with the tubes. And yeah, um, hmm, um, yeah, rebuild hmm, possibly sooner than later, regardless. So, well, and how did I clean it? Brake cleaner. Trust me, you get a good can with a lot of force in the spray or with one of those shoot it into every hole it actually gets rid of everything very easily especially when you have to do the boot okay so we're going to let this flash off have a cigarette um, obviously not next to it and in about five minutes we can start reassembly we're going to yep, uh, skf seals because these things have less stiction what is stiction? Well, it's the reason I'm doing this job. It's basically when your forks, you compress them, you get off the bike, and the bike suddenly goes meh. So that's stiction, sticky friction. And when I put these on, oof, where did I put them on? The Yamaha, as well as the Husqvarna Supermoto, Fantastic performance. I can't say it with longevity because I don't know uh, Fork seals normally about a hundred rand these things oof, Yeah, if you get them 400 or 500 bucks just for one set of dust seal and seal um, They're expensive, but apparently everybody swears by them so maybe I can sell the second hand. Eesh. By the way, if you do need fork disassembly and assembly tips, um, there is a channel I'll blend it in now. That's which inspired me to do all of this. Well, obviously not the shoddy video work or the stupid comments. That's my own design. Yeah, I know. Okay. All right. How much oil came out? Uh, around about 600 milliliters. I'm going to read up quickly on what the OEM is and what HyperPro recommends. And uh, let's do that. Biggest pain in the arse is this cap. After the gunk was cleaned out, it's now loose and keeps falling because you have to put the spring in, then push this rod all the way to the bottom, tighten the nut. Oh, by the way, uh, you have to put a bit of thread locker on here and well basically get that tight unfortunately if that thing falls yeah it falls to the bottom but you have no idea if it's up down left right or if it's properly seated so a dab of super glue just a dab to keep it in place should hopefully assist with this oh before i forget i always also get it wrong the fork seal not the dust seal the actual seal which way is up or down well generally there is a little bit of writing. On these, it's like a little 20. That 20 should face out, okay? Just a little tip. 
Oh, and the bolt at the bottom does have a copper washer, so please do replace that. Okay, overly complicated. In order to get that bolt in, the outer sleeve of... Uh, basically, just do yourself a favor, take the cap off, just loosen this lock nut and take out the pin very gently. Then put the hat sleeve down there, hold it in place somehow inside. I used a piece of wood, tighten it. Once that is done, feed the spring, feed this extra chamber, then press all of it down until you get the lock nut, slam that in, and now we can fasten the top again. Good God, overly complicated. Okay, that was a pain in the arse. Now the fun. Okay, front rear oil, oil level, 130 milliliter. 14,000 kilometers, fresh oil. Hmm. Okay, obviously, if you were just dumping the oil out, at this point, you could just measure how much was in and put exactly the same amount back. I've just filled it to 600. Obviously, it's not going to be the same, so we'll figure it out. As for how to gauge 130 milliliters, uh, millimeters of space, well, kebab stick. It's thin, light enough. Alternatively, if you want to look halfway professional, what you do, you take these new age metal straws, some sort of clip, you mark your 130 millimeter thing, you use some aquarium tubing and an old syringe you got off a dead crack addict. Or was that heroin addict? I always get that confused. Never mind, you'll find plenty of those because our society is messed up. Regardless, big tip. Small tip with me, okay? The, how do we say, fastening nut here that makes sure this thing doesn't move. If you loosen it and you didn't make a mark of where they were before, you're going to have some fun because if you screw this thing all the way down, you won't be able to adjust the rebound. So you have to turn it back, see how many clicks you get. I think it's 16 or 17, and then only tighten the nut again. And if you tighten it too hard, meaning you move this thing, this thing will become stuck. So you have to loosen it again. It... <sighs> Do yourself a favor, just mark where these nuts were, okay? Yeah, I know, it doesn't look professional, but it works. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, you are time traveling. I've done the first leg, and I found out an easier way to do all of this. You're welcome. So, when you open it, you put your tool underneath the bottom nut. You loosen that, because that's just the pinch nut. Once you've done that, you twist the top off, and then slowly extract the needle or the long rod whatever you want to call it okay once you've done that you can start taking out all the things there's a bumper here click yeah, ignore that please and once you've done that you can put all the oil out next you can start taking the spring out and loosening the um, bolt at the bottom bearing in mind that is a pain in the arse. Ooh, thing of beauty. Done. Okay, important tips when installing. Take a nice clean cloth, bit of brake cleaner, wipe out everything here. It needs to be perfectly clean. Remember, it needs optimum grip. If you want, take these out, clean them to get all the muck out of it. Uh, use Loctite on these if possible. Uh, yeah, that's basically it. Hey, uh, be gentle, you've worked hard. And don't forget this clip that holds the brake line. Just to go on here. Okay, that's that. Loctite, all good. Now, safety tip, gentlemen and ladies. Whenever you're doing something that involves brakes, taking the wheel off, whatever, Put a bit of brake fluid, uh, not brake fluid, brake cleaner on a cloth and just run it on the outside and the inside of your brake disc. This came off, okay? Why? Because A, you're keeping it clean and B, if you left any oil or anything on that, 
you're not going to smear it into the brake pads and you may lose braking power, which is not good. Also, chances are that you have moved the pads a little, so don't jump on the bike and go cruising immediately. Please pump the brakes a couple of times, take it slow, make sure that everything is settled. Also, speaking of settled, when you're doing anything with the forks, don't tighten the axle yet. Put it in, but don't tighten. Same with the pinch bolts. Take the bike off the center stand and pump the suspension a couple of times. That will also seat the front wheel and then you can tighten it. Else you may have your steering a little bit off. Okay, simple things just to remember. Now, let's put back the handlebars. All right, coming back to the rubbing part. I'm guessing it's this cable, but this is plastic. So, unless dirt gets in between and starts rubbing against... Huh, there's not much you can do here, to be quite honest. I was hoping it was some sort of cable. Oh. Okay, but I moved everything a little bit, so nothing is touching anymore. Strange. Hmm. Anyway, so that was that install. It took me longer than expected, but... These forks were an experience again. I hope you learned something. And if nothing, hopefully I entertained you to a certain degree. Take care. Goodbye.